So if you watched our introduction to milling with G12.1 and you're still here, that means you want to learn more about it. So in this video, I'll show you how the Swiss programming works and I'll show you how to use Mastercam to generate G-code and Toolpath to pop into your Swiss program and make parts that are more interesting than uh, circles and squares. So first thing we'll do is start with our program in Simcoe and we're gonna immediately minimize it and go to Mastercam. I won't bother minimizing it. So here in Mastercam, we have a part that I took the liberty of drawing up last night when they told me I was gonna be doing this video and I threw some toolpath on it and that's what I came up with. It kinda looks like Ohio, shout out to Ohio. So we got our stock, our part periphery and then just for fun, we're gonna put some text on it because we can. So if we look over here, we're gonna be using a dynamic mill. We'll run it through the back plot real quick. And that's the nice thing about G12.1 and Mastercam is you're not limited to just straight lines. We can use modern tool paths. It's gonna shoot out 170 million thousand lines of code as Mastercam does. So your machine memory might not be big enough, but it'll, it'll run it. So we're gonna start with an inch and a quarter bar. We're gonna rough it down with our dynamic mill and then we're gonna run a finish contour, clean it up, make it look nice and pretty. You get the gist, we don't need to see that. And then we're actually going to come in with a chamfer tool, which in our case is a spot drill. We're using a spot drill for a chamfer and engraving tool. We're gonna to run a chamfer pass around the periphery because nobody likes sharp edges on their parts. You get the idea, moving on. And then we're actually going to come in and engrave the company name into the face of the part so you all know who made it and you all know whose video this is. And that's what's fantastic about being able to combine the Mastercam and Swiss technology with the G12.1 is you're not limited to square parts or just round parts or simple geometries. You can do complicated geometries. You can do surfacing. You can do holes, you can do all kinds of crazy So here's our part, and I am using a default mill post. I am using mpfan.post. This is the default generic mill post, three axis mill post that Haas sends with every license of Mastercam. Uh, not Haas, excuse me. It is designed to work with a Haas that Mastercam sends with every seat. If you have Mastercam, you have mpfan.pst. So that's what I'm using. I have a modified version of it to where I'm not gonna have to do all the bullshit that I'm gonna show you when we post all this out right now. mpfan. But because I realize that editing post processors might be outside most of your wheelhouses, I'm just gonna show you how to do it with the generic default posts. So here we have our Lovely, what are we at? How many lines do we have? 3,054 lines of code. That's about par for the course. So the first thing we're gonna do is remove block numbers because I don't like them. Remove block numbers and get rid of all that. <laughs> don't need it. Don't need that. All we care about is the X, Y moves. We don't need that. We don't need this. This is all going to be done. You're going to do this in your Swiss program. It's already done. Don't need height offsets. And then we're going to go down to the bottom and we're going to get rid of all this. So we don't need that either. Actually, I think we got to go back up here when it changes tools and get rid of that. So if you're doing this a lot, you can really see the advantages of having a, a modified post processor so you don't have to do this but this is how you do it if you don't have that. So we're just gonna get rid of everything except the rapid moving, you know, the G1, G2, G3, and our X, Y, Z. That's all we care about. We are using cutter comp with the diameter comp. So you can, that's, that's another benefit. You can use cutter comp. It does it for you as long as you have your lead in, lead out uh, configured properly. So there we go. We got rid of all the we don't need. And the only thing left to do is to load it in our program and go. Almost. The single biggest issue, all your Z's are backwards. 
All these positive Z's need to be negatives and all these negative Z's need to be positive. On the Swisses, the Z axis is reversed. This is the same for front side, back side, doesn't matter. The Z positive is into the material. On the Mills, Z positive is a clearance. So we need to make all these Z positives Z negatives, and we need to make all these Z negatives Z positives. The easiest way to do that is find and replace. Find and replace will save you hours. And then if you miss one of these, if you're doing this without find and replace, you're just doing it one at a time and you miss one, you will rapid your tool into your part and you'll make some very interesting noises. So we are going to find Z. We are going to replace Z with Z minus, oops, Z minus, and replace all. So all 250, that's a lot of fucking Z's to go through and do one at a time. So we're gonna find and replace all. So now we have all our clearance moves and we have a bunch of bad code. So we need to take the Z minus minus, do another find and replace, Z minus minus, Z. So we're gonna take all these formerly Z negatives and we're gonna make them Z positives. Replace all. 217 occurrences replaced. So that's the biggest issue and you see how easy it is. So all our Z's are now correctly oriented. We have our clearance moves. We're feeding to depth. It's doing some weird that only God and Mastercam knows why it does. This is at the very bottom. Scroll all the way down. Oh, this is engraving the letters. So you got your, it rapids out, rapids back in for some reason. That's Mastercam for you. But it does what it does and that's why we use it. Unless you don't. If you can't afford it, use Fusion. Use uh, Bobcad, whatever cam software that you can afford. So then we are gonna take our first tool. Tool 31, quarter inch two fluid end mill. This is all of our roughing, our dynamic milling. We're gonna drag all the way down here, all the way down here. Or find where it changes tools. There it is. Shift click keyboard shortcut saves you tons of time control C so I've just copied the entirety of the tool path for tool 31 we're gonna jump back over to Simcoe it's already set up you can pause this you can screenshot it copy this down use somebody else's work that's how programming works you never write anything original some guy back in 1984 wrote it and everybody since has just copied it control V paste the whole shebang in there. Look at that. Can you imagine writing all that by hand? Sitting there with a slide rule for all you guys that remember what a slide rule is or could identify a slide rule in a drawer. So there's tool 31, our rough end mill, rough and finish end mill. We're gonna come back over here, grab our chamfering and engraving tool. Again, shift click, control C, Go to the next tool where I've pre-prepared it, control V, done. Make sure you save it. That's about all she wrote. I can drop this into the Swiss and run it. But before I do that, I'll give you a quick breakdown on what is actually going on here. What makes the G12.1 tick? G98 inches per minute, interference check off, subspindle index, we're going to C0. So when you're laying out your part, when you're drawing your part, zero is up. So C0, it's gonna have your part up. It makes it easier to understand what the hell is going on. If you're trying to do indexing, if you have flats, if you have different geometries, like, well, is this indexed at 90 degrees? Is it indexed at 180? You can go in here and look at your wireframe. Zero degrees is up. If you have a hole off to one side, you can tell which way is which. Spindle index, live tooling on, tool 32, initial positioning and our offset call. And here's the G12.1. This is straight out of the book. The book can explain it better than I can. G12.1 D0E equals C. It's just telling it. G12.1, we're going into milling mode. Yep, got it. That's the whole point of the video. D0, it's using the main spindle. E equals C just tells it that C is the axis being converted into Y. 
You can do other things. I've never done it. If you try it, let us know in the comments. Uh, let us know how much it costs to have your machine realigned. And then G17 is just shifting to the XY work plane. Because your turning is going to be done in G18. That's your X and Z work plane. If you, if you don't shift to G17, it's going to be cutting your radiuses into your subspindle. It's going to take your part, instead of running your part this way with all your engraving done on the face, it's going to try and do it this way in X and Z. It's, figure it out. You're a machinist. And then down here at the end, we have our wrap it out, our clearance move away from the material. G13.1 cancels the G12.1. So now we're going back to programming on a diameter. And then we call our G18 back to XZ work plane, G99 inches per revolution, M182 shut the backside live tooling off, T0 to cancel our tool offset. And then we're done. This is just a stripped down uh, gutted version of the program that's only gonna run these tool paths just for this demo. So you saw how simple that was. You saw how simple I made that look for the video. You didn't see the hour and a half I sat here prettying it up last night. We just go in master cam, We've got our dynamic milling. We've got a chamfer. We've got some engraving. Post it out with a default post. Get rid of all the shit that we don't need. Flip our Zs. If you only take one thing away, if you post anything out of Mastercam, it doesn't have to be this complicated. You can just post out a square if you don't feel like doing it by hands. Post out a square, make sure you flip your Zs. Make sure your Zs are going the correct directions for your machine. And then we copy paste it into Simcoe save that make sure it's saved and then we're going to jump over to the machine and we're going to see how this works because i haven't run this before i posted it out this is the first time i posted it with the mp fan post too yesterday i was testing it with my modified post so we're going to learn together how good of a job i can do the first time around so we're done at the computer i got the program loaded in the machine something to be aware of when you're posting out with Mastercam especially, big programs will make your machine lag. It's gonna take a few seconds for editing changes to be saved, programs to be moved around in. It's, it's gonna slow your machine down. It'll run it fine, but when you're in like the edit window, you can't just jump around. Your machine is gonna be a little bit slow. So as far as the machine itself, we've got our tools, quarter inch two fluid end mill, eighth inch spot drill for our chamfer tool. And then I just have our finest piece of aluminum out of the scrap bin that I've got in there touched off to run the part in. And uh, we're just gonna push go and see what happens. Like I said, I haven't put this machine, I haven't put this program in this machine. I haven't run this. I did run it through high speed check, so I know it will actually run the program. I have never tested this program before, so we're gonna see if it works or not looking good could probably get a little bit more aggressive with the feed but right now we're running our dynamic mill doesn't look very interesting now it's just roughing down the OD it's gonna run like three passes around the OD and then it's gonna start roughing in the sides and that radius they're starting to do some contouring so you can see it looks like a tool path that you would see in a mill just laid on its side we're just going to let it run. It's going to run through this dynamic mill. It's going to load a, uh, it's going to run a finished contour and then it's going to come over, chamfer it, hopefully, and then engrave the company name in the end of it. There she's running the chamfer pass. Looks like we got some chips coming off. I did a pretty good job guesstimating. And then we're going to see how well it does on the engraving. It's looking pretty good, I'm not going to lie. So this would run on an L20 on the front side, back side. The only thing it won't run, this machine in particular, is an L32 Type 12 with a live B-arm. You cannot run a G12.1 on the front side. If your machine has G950 on the front like these machines do, you cannot run G12.1. You have to run G950. At some point we'll do a video, but it's pretty f***ing similar. The code runs the same, it's just the little preparatory codes for rotating the coordinate plane and you're shifting to radio mode. 
but the Type 12s or anything with like a Live B where you're using your G900 series codes, you can't use a G12.1 on that axis. So you can use a G12.1 on the back side, but since this has a Live B, it won't work on the front side. It'll tell you invalid G code or something like that. But like A32s, if you have live tooling on your A32s, it'll run on those. A20s, if you have live tooling there, L20s, K16s, they'll all run G12.1, just not with a G950 equipped machine. So there's our part, pulled it out. There's a little issue with it. It's actually mirrored. Uh, that's one of the other things to watch out for. But you know what, it's not a problem because you can go back to Mastercam, mirror it in Mastercam, repost it, and it's gonna come out just like the picture. All right, so there's our part. I know we covered a lot of content in this video and I just kind of blasted through a lot of it, but go back, stop, take screenshots, rewatch it. It helps the algorithm. If you have any comments, questions, if you have more specific questions about G12.1 and why yours specifically in particular isn't working, put it in the comments. I might actually go down there and read them this time. Uh, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next one. Oh, the kids don't say stay tuned anymore, do they? They're all 55 years old on Facebook. This is going on YouTube. Yeah. Is that is that a problem? <laughs>